This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. The famous Sydney Night Market. Sydney Night Market. Yeah, the, um, the most hasn't, famous. Most famous. Yeah. It hasn't really changed that much over the last. Well, I've been here. The first time I was here is maybe 15 wait, years wait, ago. Wait, wait, wait. Yep. It's gotten a few more LCD screens. Yes, yes. But they yeah. always had a lot of neon lights neon, anyway. Yeah, neon light, neon screen. Yeah. yeah. So that's not a big change. <laughs> and I guess the the people around here is the same, maybe. How so? You mean demographically? Yeah, demographically, uh, demographically uh, the same. Okay. You know, I think the one thing I noticed, the big difference between the Suling Night Market and the Taichung Night Market, mainly in Fengjia, is the demographic is a little bit different. I think in the Fengjia Night Market, it's predominantly young people. Yes. But in the Suling Night Market, there can be all different ages, although, you know, yeah, a lot of young, young, but I see a lot of older people. Yes, okay, so yes. here we are at the Sitting Night Market, yes. and uh, like we were just saying, not a big, no big changes in 20 years, and you're saying it's a big place for tourists, Yes. and that's like Taiwan tourists. Yeah, Taiwan tourists. And, uh, so you're talking about people from the south? Yeah, yeah, from the down south, from the east, east uh, of the Taiwan, and the uh, uh, visiting night market is uh, um, family stuff, family fair. A family fair. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, if you came up to Taipei from like Kaohsiung or something with your whole family, yes, and you stayed nearby, yeah. you come here at least, you know, one night at least. Yes. Okay. Um, spin around there, Jimmy. You can get a shot of the whole street. Wow. And of course, it has a very long street, but it's yes. not just this one street. It circles all the way around in both directions. Yeah, it's a district. It's not just a single street. It's a district. The whole district. Yeah, whole district. And this one is just one of the entrances. One of the many entrances. Yeah. It, but of course, this is whenever I come here, this is the one strip I always come down yes, first. Yes. And so we can see, you know, that. As far as the night market goes, it's very similar to many other night markets. Yes. Only I think one of the big differences is in Taiwan, you get a lot of night markets where things are set up temporarily. Things here are temporary but more permanent. Yeah, permanent. But you just um, run in the business and uh, found the evening, uh, found the evening to, to the deep night. Yeah, if you came here in the daytime, uh -huh. totally closed. Yeah, closed, closed. Right. That little place that we passed as we came in with like the fresh fruit and like the meats. Yes. Oh, you've never been down here? I've not been into this whole place. I mean, like, like you're saying, it's a whole other city. So <laughs> yeah, a lot of these stores, some of them will even have basements. I mean, they're permanent, yes. but then the things on the street come out at night. They're all locked up in the day. Yep. So you would never notice it much in the day. Have you been to the new section? Suppose there's a new section that's been set up. They've tried to organize things a little bit more. Do you know anything about that section? Uh, no, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, I ever been to there, been there uh, once or twice. Yeah, yeah I need to, uh, the, another part. Mm -hmm. I think that what, one of the lessons we learn here, Stephen and James, is that even when you have something so popular as this, there's really no way to come in and like give it some kind of different organization. It has a kind of its own style, you know? And I think if we compare this to say like the Fengjia Night Market, which we're going to visit another time, or the Xiaobei Night Market in Tainan, a lot of similarity. Yep. But I, I really love these shoe designs because you, you actually get this exact same kind of design inside the department store. Yes, yes. Only here you get it out on the street, you know? Uh, I love the way yeah, it just fills out. Each shop is extending. I mean, the street's actually quite wide. I mean, yeah, even when you try to get this in Fengjia, they widen the street. I think they double the width, but then the actual walking space ended up being smaller because everybody moved right into it. So this is exactly it. Oh yeah, they come right out into the sidewalk. How do you, in a lot of these kinds of promotions here, 
I'm just one just here. This guy's a way out. Can you imagine it's packed and you cannot move in around uh, during the weekend? Well, here we're, I mean, this is like a Wednesday. I mean, it's incredible. This is midweek. I mean, kind of retail activity that's going on here is incredible. Yeah, what we have is Wednesday, it's middle of the week, it's not a weekend. So if you're here on the weekend, it literally is bumping up against each other. You can't move without bumping right into anybody. You can't move backwards or forwards, really packed. What about the prices, Steven, in a place like this? It depends. Depends on what? It depends on the bargaining. So you have to be able to bargain? Yeah, sometimes. So don't and come to the night market unless you can bargain. Sometimes, I know. Sometimes they have those. Special over, like a special here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now, um, we maybe we can say the pricing strategy uh, of the night market is uh, dynamic. <laughs> dynamic. Very, very dynamic. Yeah, maybe the same uh, seller will will sell this stuff. Okay, and this one is the oldest. Oldest then. So this is the oldest lane that's yeah, in the yeah. Philly night market. Yes. So even in here we have our big bra stores. Bras are just crazy recently. They're everywhere and all the department stores every place. And of course shoes and clothes are really big sellers here. Again, I think the key like you're saying is you gotta be able to bargain, but even if you can't bargain, you can just get some good prices just on the just on the you know the the list price. Yes. Again, it's not completely like that. I mean, it's not narrow here, but it's become narrow. And we've even got lock in front of us here. Yeah, yeah. And there's a mobile shop. We'll go this way. You go that way. So we have a mobile shop that was right in the middle, and this is very similar to when we went to the uh, wet market. Yes. And so you had people that could move around. Uh, I guess you can try to save some rent that way. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I don't know. I guess uh, with one of those, I'll have an account. Right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And then, of course, you get all these stands that come right out into the street. And you get your people out in the street, calling people right in, getting attention. If you want something, just say it. Snack here. snacks, right? Right bang in the middle here. Yeah. Yeah, all our snacks. You can't have a night market without a lot of food to eat, especially a lot of kind of snacks to eat. Okay, so here we go. We just got you through all the food, Eric. What's up? You would take you um, 20 minutes. Just to go down this street. Just go down the street. Just this one small street would be 20 minutes. And to walk all the way around the market would probably be a good hour, yeah. at least minimum. Boy, some really crowded space here, yeah. huh? But I think the point is, it's not necessarily crowded because of the people. It's crowded because the design is making it crowded. Oh, come on! This design is really pushing people in, funneling people in. The street is at least double the size of what we're walking on, at least. We can see it, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a classic example of what's happened on the left here, isn't it? Where... Yeah, you're way out into the street. Beyond in the bounds. So, Stephen, it's really the street design that gives you that crowded feeling, yes. don't you think? Yes. I mean, there are a lot of people here, but what we're talking about is just a couple people width-wise, and already yes. you're out of space. Uh -huh. The street is at least double, maybe three times the actual width. Yes. So for the retailing situation, you're just funneling people right in. This is the definition of Zulu now. Yeah. I know the people uh, enjoy the pain or the no, no. Exactly. No. So... The funny thing is, if you were to give a survey and ask these people, do you like to ask my students, for example, would you like to go someplace where you're packed in and everybody says no? But this is really packed in and yes. everybody enjoys it and feels comfortable in it. Uh, and um, maybe more packed. More packed. <laughs> more packed, yeah. We're more, not even packed more today. More enjoyable. You know? <laughs> yeah. The more packed you are, the more enjoyable it is. Nobody objects to the design uh -huh. and it just adds to that feeling. Yeah, they leave this uh, design un un unchanged. Exactly, yeah, exactly. For, for, uh, I mean, here we're down tickets. to one person. Yeah, we're, we're single file right now. We're actually single file in a big street. I don't know, Stephen, this is my definition of Zona. What do you yes. think? 
Yeah, yeah. Somebody wants thirty dollars. Yeah. Somebody wants thirty dollars to buy something. How about a squid? For a drink, I'll go. I had enough. I don't want. You can have a squid. I don't mind. Okay, okay, food category is the main category of night market. It seems to me that we're walking in the main category as food. Yeah. Here, Anastasia, here. Would you call that the main category for the night market food? Yes. I think it's definitely one of the main categories, and certainly certain sections of it is. Even when we go to the Fengjiang night market, the whole area is, every, every other stand is related to food somehow, yes, right? Yes. Everybody comes out to get a snack or hang out with their friends. Yeah. But I think it also reflects on Chinese cultural emphasis on food in general. You get people coming out, they have a social time, they have their friends together, and what do you have to have? You have to have some food. You gotta have food, you can't get away without it. Yeah, maybe uh, it can get uh, related to the uh, Chinese uh, Night food. Yeah. You know, the happy of night food. Yeah. Night food, night snacks, yeah, things night like snacks, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In between the meal. I mean, yeah. Yeah. The meal. what amazes me is like going to car four and you still see those little snack wagons inside the store. Yeah, right, they try to adopt a little bit of that, right? But here we can see that, you know, it's going to really be hard for a, a mainstream Western retailer to copy this kind of format. It's really hard. There's, it's hard on two levels. One level, the psychological level of they just can't buy this as being the right way. And number two, how do you implement it? It's really hard. And I think we saw a little bit of that in Hong Kong maybe, James, where if retailers could co-opt it a little bit and then bring it in or maybe like rent out some space and let some vendors come in and create that feeling. But in Taiwan, we don't see that. The Westerners just keep it their Western format. Like that, the way they're sort of familiar with. I think that's really... It, it, it's kind of odd because, I mean, what are the retail format on a Wednesday night? is packed like this. Yeah, right. I mean, there's just the right. whole world is Now, here. you can't tell me you're not getting a lot of revenue here. Yeah, you know. Sure. Get some of these other places, such as the Mr. Donut behind me, but you can really see the contrast. You know, we have a nice, clean Mr. Donut with the glass windows, and then outside in the ceiling night market, you have this really chaotic kind of crowding and a completely different setup. So I think it's a really strong contrast. You gotta watch out. That is not the same as what we have right here in front of us everywhere. And these retailers have tried to come into the market and they just can't make it. They can't really cut it. Because you're, you're not adopting any of that format. These guys should get out here with a stand. Mr. Donut should get a stand out here and they would have more success than what they're doing in there. So it's a really strong contrast and I think these retailers have tried for many years without success to break into this huge revenue stream right here. That's the zone out thing. <laughs> Dunking donuts. Deserted. Best dish. Best dish. This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior.